Um, so uh, you might expect me to start by talking about climate change, um, but uh, I'm not going to. Uh, the question for fusion is not whether it can solve climate change. I mean, it can. That just is factually true. If we had a working fusion technology, there'd be no energy problem. But we don't have a working fusion technology. So the question for fusion is not whether it can solve climate change, but whether we can solve fusion. Um, and what we have at first light is we have a completely new, new idea, new approach. New approach to the core technology, and that leads to a, a new uh, engineering approach and a completely new set of possibilities. And there's a, there's a key to the whole thing, and that's this. So this is one of our fuel pellets. Um, and I'm going to explain a bit about what this is, but first I want to talk about our mission statement. So our mission statement is solving the problem of fusion power with the simplest machine possible. And I want to focus on the fusion power bit of that. The majority of researchers in fusion are solving the problem of fusion physics, not of fusion power. And it's understandable, because it's right in the, in the core, in the heart of this technology, is an incredibly difficult physics problem. Um, but the challenge for fusion power is that a great solution to the, some of the physics um, can, down the line, introduce an intractable engineering problem. So at first light, we've always tried to take a holistic view, and we've always tried to remember we have to actually be able to build this thing. And that's informed our, our approach. So what we have is a new method for inertial fusion, which we call projectile fusion. Um, so this is the simplest diagram I can possibly draw to explain it. <laughs> um, so we have um, a big machine which launches a projectile at high velocity, and it hits into our uh, fuel pellet, which we call the target. So velocity is the most important parameter for the projectile. The total energy matters as well, but it's more important how quickly it delivers that energy, which is more velocity. Now, the launcher, we use electromagnetic launch, so it's like a railgun. And then the target, this is the complex physics problem. So that has to focus some of the energy of the projectile into fusion fuel to make the whole thing happen. And, and this is um, a video from one of our simulations. So this shows uh, a 10 millimeter copper projectile. It's one millimeter thick, so it's, it's kind of like a coin sort of flying sideways. It shows it hitting one of our targets. And inside the target, you see a little spherical cavity, and that's filled with hydrogen, the fusion fuel. When the projectile hits, it creates an enormous pressure, and it forms a pressure wave which travels through the target. When that pressure wave goes over the cavity, it forces it to collapse. Um, and for a brief fraction of a second, you have a plasma which is hotter than the sun and is denser than lead. And so that's how our, our technology works. Okay, why do we do it this way? Why do we do projectile fusion? Well, from the mainstream of fusion, there's three very well-known major engineering challenges for fusion. And I'm just going to talk about the one which more people have heard of, which is preventing the neutron damage. So four-fifths of the energy from fusion comes out in the form of neutrons, high-energy neutrons. Um, and that's a challenge because they cause embrittlement of structural steel, so they cause it to become brittle over time, and eventually they cause it to fail. Now, in a power plant, obviously, you can't let something fail, so what that translates to is a maintenance cycle. Um, and for a conventional fusion design, you have to replace something which is right in the heart of the reactor, um, maybe as frequently as every few years, and that's a massive availability challenge. So projectile fusion, it gives you some space to bring in a different kind of solution. So you launch the projectile over there, and it hits the target over there. So what we can do is we can invert this picture. So we can have our liquid coolant, which is going to be liquid lithium, inside the reaction vessel. And what happens now is the neutrons hit the lithium, and you can't damage the crystal structure of a liquid, right? So some neutrons come out the back, but they're massively reduced in flux and massively reduced in energy. Now, this is a very abstract drawing. This is the more concrete instantiation of the idea. So we want to leverage existing technology from the fast breeder reactors, so already full gigawatt-scale reactors built using liquid metal as the coolant. So we want to have a pool-type liquid metal system. So we have a big pool of liquid metal. Above the surface, that's where the projectile hits the target. A big pulse of energy is released from that process. And the key thing is we want to recirculate the liquid metal up to the top and have it fall from the top of the reactor. So that forms a liquid metal curtain or shield, and that protects the near structure. And we've done the neutronics calculations, and it's 
preliminary results, but it looks like we can reduce the neutron damage by 100-fold. So we've simply sidestepped that problem. Now, how do we launch the projectile? Well, this is our electromagnetic launcher. So this is machine three. It was commissioned towards the end of last year. You get a sense of scale from the, uh, the steps on the right-hand side. Uh, there are a lot of stats I could give you about machine three. I'm going to give you the most important. Um, per joule of energy delivered to the target, it's 1,000 times cheaper than what's being proposed by the mainstream, which is an enormous advantage. So machine three is our fusion demonstrator. That's our big result, our milestone uh, for this year is to show fusion. And I'm going to come back to velocity. So machine three can launch a projectile to between 20 to 30 kilometers per second. To show fusion, we need to get to 50 kilometers per second. So plainly, there's a gap we need to close here. And we're back to the target being the key to the whole thing. Uh, that simulation which I showed you, that's not the real target. <laughs> that's the target from 10 years ago. Most of our work is on what we call advanced target design. How do we get more performance out of the same projectile? And it's all trade secrets, so I can't tell you what they are, but I can tell you what they do. What they do is they multiply the velocity. And our highest experimentally demonstrated velocity multiple is seven times. And that makes a massive difference, as you can see on this plot. It makes a massive difference to the projectile that we need. It makes a massive difference to the machine that we need. It makes a massive difference to, eventually, the viability of the technology. Uh, so. The target really is the key enabling thing, and that's the thing that, that we have that no one else has. So I want to finish the technology part by returning to our mission statement, solving the problem of fusion power with the simplest machine possible. We have a dramatically simpler machine, and we have a reactor pathway which heavily reuses existing technology, so we think that could be easier. Uh, now, you don't get anything for free, so there is a part which is much more complicated, and that's the target. That is really a very, very hard problem to solve. But this is why demonstrating fusion is such a massive step forward. Um, it starts to become a complexity which is, in the past, a thing which we did and showed that it worked. If our codes are proved right this year, then all of this simplicity is unlocked. Now, moving on to the, the business side, again, it's all about the target. So each target is going to release the same amount of energy as a barrel of oil. That's how energy dense the fuel is. So, our business model is a consumables one. We will manufacture and sell the target to the operators of the power plant. And our continued competitive advantage will be in designing the next generation of target. Pick your cliche, right? It's the ultimate Nespresso capsule or the ultimate razor blade, right? For everything else, our strategy is partnership. Um, we recognize that we can't build an entire power plant. Um, fusion, to me, is not a disruptive technology. It's a revolutionary technology, but it's a continuing technology. It's still centralized generation. So this sketch shows the nuclear value chain. Now, obviously, we don't need uranium, so these guys are going to disappear, and they're replaced with other suppliers of raw materials. And we're going to be the uh, fuel um, provider. Uh, but all the rest of the people on here, all of their business models remain completely unaffected. Uh, it's business as usual. They're building one of our plants rather than one of someone else's plants. We think that's a big opportunity very strongly aligned partnerships. And that's already being played out. We're, we're talking to a number of these people already. Now, uh, it's not just me. <laughs> uh, we've got a team of 40 people uh, working in Oxford. And since this is going to be recorded, um, I will say thank you to our incredible team. And uh, we have a world-class advisory board, so you can see the names on there. And I think they've been attracted by the, the scientific rigor of our approach. Uh, so to finish, this is our timeline. Um, demonstration of fusion this year is a massive de-risk in the core technology, but it's a journey from showing fusion to showing energy gain, which no one's ever done. Um, if we knew the gain experiment was going to work, we wouldn't have to do it. We have to do the experiment. So it's a five-year plan to build a new, bigger machine and to do the gain experiment. In parallel, we've already started on the reactor design, uh, so we'll be developing that as well. And we think it's going to be eight years from today to get to a detailed design of a reactor, ready to break ground and start building a power plant. And critically, we think that's long enough to get, uh, sort out the, uh, start the conversation with the regulator and have uh, that uh, regulation approval as well. That is actually on the critical path of sorting out the regulations. Um, so with that, I will finish. Thank you.